Yeah, Corona, like I'm in here just got everybody at risk. Do you know every time you step outside, every, you at risk? Think about that, I was on the plane. Coming back from Chicago, I was on the plane and I looked out the window and I was like, we're not supposed to be up here. <laughs> Do you realize this thing is full of fuel? and luggage, and it's heavy and big. We not supposed, you worried about coronavirus and you get on a plane? In my car the other day, I mean, God was just showing me this, in the HOV, we was on the HOV, so you know I was going to HOV speed, whatever that is. I don't know what it is, so don't tell me. Don't, don't tell me what it is, because in my mind I think I know, but I don't, I don't, I don't need y'all to tell me. I was going that speed and I was thinking, man, if I make like one false move, my life is over and anybody in my way and anybody that I, I mean, it's, we're taking a chance on it. Went to a restaurant last night, the pickle and the, the chicken, I was going to say pickle and cabbage, chicken and the, and the pickle. And I'm in there eating, I'm just eating the chicken, Amy. I'm just eating it. It was good too. Wood roasted. You need to try it. Had the jerk seasoning on it. I'm just eating, I'm eating it. And then the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, you don't even know what they did to that chicken. You trust in that chicken. You don't know what they did back there to that chicken. We don't know what the chicken did to himself when he was alive. That might have been the chicken that wanted to... <laughs> but we don't know. And I'm just eating it. And God showed me, he said, don't you understand without me, you're nothing? Yeah. Boy, the Sunday I said it, they get closer to the wall. Let me, let me get to the message. Adam and Believer. Adam and Believer. Adam and com forward slash godly family. Oh. Dot PDF. We on the godly series there. But you don't know. I got to keep on that though. You just don't know. Really, we just take it for granted. So God was like, you can't be sitting there worried about catching some virus when I'm carrying you through every other facet of your life. I'm the one in charge of your life. I'm the one fighting off diseases. I'm the one keeping you alive. I'm the one keeping you healthy. I'm the one sustaining your health. Amen. He's the one. You can't take credit for that. He's the one. Amen. Amen. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash godly family dot P D F. Amen. God created the family to exemplify himself in the earth. Did you know that? The family is in the earth. To represent him in the earth. We don't know what God's original plan was before man fell. Maybe he was just going to keep making people. But whatever he was doing, he was making them in his image and in his likeness. So that they would represent him in the earth. Amen. The husband, the wife and children are to exhibit God's love toward one another and create a what? Nobody should be able to come between your family. Your children are supposed to have your back. Husband, you're supposed to have your wife's back. Wife, you're supposed to have your husband. Y'all, nobody's supposed to come in between your family. Nobody. Amen. This is how we exhibit God's love because God said, nothing shall separate me. I mean, Paul said, nothing shall separate me from what? The love of God. Not tribulation, nor distress, nor peril, nor sword, nor wickedness. Nothing. That's how it's supposed to be in your home. Nothing. No matter what y'all are going through, nothing comes between 
Amen. Let me talk to the children for a minute. Your loyalty to your parents should be undying. After they have fed you, cared for you, bought for you, all of that, you owe them your life. Nobody turns you against your folks. Amen. You don't sit up and get mad, let something get in your heart about your folks. You ride or die with mama and daddy. Amen. Well, my daddy's a deadbeat daddy. You ride or die with him. Amen. Somebody start talking about him. Now, wait a minute. Only I can talk about him. He ain't your dad. So you can't talk about him. I wish somebody would come over here. Say something about my mama. Boy, don't you, boy. It's my mama. My wife, my anybody, my sister, anybody. My children. Yeah, that's off limits. You, Because you don't know what's going on. All you know is you're unhappy. You don't know what's going on in my house. You don't know what's going on with my family. Man, I, it's a, it's a, let me see how many people. Are the husband, the wife, the children are to exhibit God's love toward one another and create an unbreakable bond. Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family, where? Yes. In heaven and where? Yes. In earth is named. Your family is supposed to be named after God yes. by exemplifying his righteousness. Yes. In your family. Point at somebody say, in your family. I don't care how shabby your family I don't care if it's a single mother, single daddy, single puppy. I don't care what's going on in your house. You give that family to God and you let God govern it. He'll fix it. Hey Amen. Brother Corey, is Corey here? Him and his fiance? I'm, I'm doing premarital with them tomorrow, I think. Marrying them Sunday, his mama, when that boy was, how old was Corey? Eight? Maybe nine, ten? How old was he? Where are they? Oh, okay. How old were you, Corey, when y'all came to this church? Nine. His mother's a single mother. Was here every Sunday. Wasn't talking to most of y'all because she didn't know nobody. But she would bring that boy, bring him in here. Now he's getting married in this church. She dedicated her life. She wasn't in there trying to find a dude. She wasn't in there sitting next to the cutest man. Praising the Lord all on him. Oh, praise God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, thank you. She went <laughs> She wasn't, she what did it do? <laughs> they do that <laughs> sit you by yourself you ain't even lifting your hands <laughs> sit you by the right dude whoa, I'm good. whoa Jesus oh he's good girl is offering oh oh, oh. <laughs> well, you know <laughs> but she came in here and brought him and he asked me do his pre murder he asked me to do his way he in here because he believes the message. Yeah. Amen. So whatever your situation is, it can work out for you. Just don't be sitting up listening to no witch trying to mess your life up because her life is messed up. That's how witches do. Trace it. Trace it. Okay, who the one talking? Who the one gossiping? Who the one slandering? Let me look at your life. Let me chase your sit. Let me look at your situation. I guarantee you. You gonna find a witch? Amen. Family is important in understanding love and learning to love. Family is important in understanding. We don't even talk about this as a society. This is where you learn to love. And this is where you learn to show love. In the family. Thank
Thank you. Somebody got blessed. Love. This is where we can learn to love and understand love so we can show love to those that are not in our immediate families. That's why people come in a situation like this fellowship and they don't know how to show love. They think love is really gossip. Because that's what their mama did. Talked about their daddy. They think love is coming and rebuking the pastor. Because that's what they did. Rebuke their dads. When the Bible said rebuke not an elder. They think it's okay to dog out the elders in this church. Not knowing no man the Bible said don't do that. Because you know what? You can easily leave. You cannot come and you don't have to endure any of it. Amen. I don't like that one deacon they got. Leave. We didn't put flies out. I don't have a billboard. No, they put it right by the church so I could point at the. They ain't put no billboards out. We ain't advertised. We barely shared the address. We're happy with the amount we have in here. Yeah, we're not doing that kind of stuff. So, ain't nobody making you come. Do yourself a favor. Family is important in understanding love and learning love so we can show love to those that are not in our immediate families. Okay, I'm going to get through this. I need to hurry this up. Amen. The instructions of the father, comfort of the mother, and discipline of the children create a training ground for how we should love those that are outside. Did y'all hear that? The instructions of the father, comfort of the mother, and discipline of the children creates a training ground for how we should love those that are outside. Proverbs tells us, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will what? Not depart from it. The church should be a place where families can grow spiritually and glean insight and understanding through the authority God places in the church. That's why folks can't handle church because church has an authority. Amen. Amen. And when you're a man and you're not the authority in your house and your wife is, she's going to have a problem with an authority in the church. Ain't no man in here that's an authority in his house got a problem with the pastor being the authority. Am I telling the truth, men? Ain't got a problem. That don't, I don't demean them by me being in an authoritative position. Matter of fact, I help them. I help y'all. Do, do I help y'all? Just as a father has authority to lead the family, God's chosen leaders, you hear chosen? Everybody ain't chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Just as a father has the authority, God's chosen leader has authority over the church. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. Right? Know them which labor among you and are what? Are what? Are what? Are what? Over you in the Lord. And admonish you. Sometimes they got to admonish you. Which is a happy rebuke. It's still a rebuke admonish. Brother, it'd be better if you didn't make that choice right there. Who are you? I mean, we, in, in God's eyes, we all the same. Bye. Be the same at home then. Be the, if we're the same, one of us isn't necessary. When the home is sound, the children will make, a, will make better choices in life. Y'all believe that? When the home is sound. What's a sound home? That's where the order of God is there. Amen. 
And if you're a single mother, well, how do I do the order? You follow God. You place yourself under an authority, which you have by coming here. Right. Amen. Right. And you, you know, I don't know if you're waiting on a man. I don't know if you, I don't know what your situation is, but you put God there right. to protect your home. And you still got to do it God's way. You still have to recognize the man as the head, whether you married or not. Still have to uh, uh, understand your role to not strive. Amen. Being a single mother is not the end of the world for nobody. Can I preach in here? To be told as a whole lot of folks escaped. But you be coming in here judging folks. And that could have been your story a whole bunch of times. Some of you. Can I preach? So we expect good home training no matter who's raising. If the dad is not in your life, you and God raise him. But give him good home training. Amen. Be faithful to the ministry. I'm going to keep on preaching. Teaching will always translate. Good home training and teaching will always translate into good citizens in the church and in the world. Good home training. We was at the pickle in the... What's the place? The chicken and the pickle. And the waitress was waiting on another girl like she was probably 15, 16 years old. And one of the other employees just walked by and just grabbed her behind. While she's serving us. And she looked at her, she said, don't do that. She was upset. Yeah. You know why that boy did that? Well, no home training, definitely monkey training. But you know why he did that, though? Because there was no threat or looming authority in that girl's life. See, boys know when the daddy is around. They know when there's a looming authority. Amen. And if you're a single woman and you're a part of ABC, there's plenty of looming authorities. Mo, please. Like hawks. Ah, boy, he the hat, boy. Let that be my daughter. Oh, my goodness. She didn't have nobody to go home and tell. I could see it in her eyes. Probably because mama on the internet trying to get groped. We at the table eating Jonathan with us. My son's 15. He, he had to see that. And I felt sorry for him. Ooh, I wanted to go chase that little nugget. See? Just want to run it down for her sake. Yeah, but good home training and teaching will always translate into good citizens in the church and in the world. Amen? You can tell the ones on the job that had good home training. First Peter 5 and 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Who is the elder? The older. Older. You don't know what men have been through. You don't know what God has taken them through. You don't be opening your mouth talking against God's elders. The Bible said, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God does what? Resenteth the proud and giveth grace to who? To the humble. Yeah, this is an order in 1 Peter 5 and 5. He gives the order, elders, and then the rest of you. The love of God must be instilled in our homes so that we can love our brothers and sisters in the faith. That's how you learn how to love your brothers and sisters in the faith, by learning to love at home. Our children must be reared in unconditional love. Somebody say, oh, I love them unconditionally. No, you don't. Because you don't approve of them when they fail. 
Yeah, because you think they make you look bad when they're not striving to impress you. That means your love isn't unconditional. Your love is based on people's opinions of your family. The act of earning approval pushes them to strive. Yeah. Yeah. So when they, man, y'all got to be careful with these sports. I'm, I'm going to preach in here. Ain't nothing wrong with sports. I watch sports, all of that. But you better put some character in them while you putting how fast they can run, jump, and swim in them. Amen. And let them know that there's more to this world than the hand claps of a crowd. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm preaching in here. Amen. Missing church. What you missing church for? You sending the wrong message. Man, I'm a boy. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with it. I hope, ooh, ain't nothing wrong with it. I know so many professional athletes. I've had to counsel them and all of that. A lot of them I still know very well. Hall of Famers, all of that. And they all tell me the same thing. I wish while I was out there practicing, I had been somewhere learning at the same time. They say, I I invested in one side of it, and now the other side is giving me problems. Amen. And if they lose, you still love them. Amen. We lose. Ain't no Venus and Serena in here. They daddy was so crazy it made another man slap somebody. <laughs> I promised I wouldn't go talk. I, I promised myself I wasn't gonna bring that junk up. But it just it was it was such a apropos. It was perfect. It fit so well. I just had to let me continue. <laughs> The act of earning approval pushes children to strive. <laughs> Amen. First Peter 4 and 8. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover what? Um, if you love right. So no matter what your kids decide to do, you don't be dis. How are you disappointed in the path that your child chose for their life? That's all you want to be is a stay home mama. Oh, we got, you ought to be, what? That's not your life. And truth be told, you don't like yours. That's why you're trying to live vicariously. Man, I'm getting the witches out of here, Elder. Oh, they growing wings. Can't take too much more of this. They can't take it. <laughs> Telling their kids what to become. Telling their husband what he should have been. I mean, just. <laughs> Get them out of here. When we push our children to succeed and chase success, we replace unconditional love with conditions in their heart that cause them to judge people based on what they possess or have accomplished. Did you know that? So when you push your children to succeed, now listen, there's nothing wrong with success. There's nothing wrong with doing well. There's nothing wrong with doing good. Nothing at all. But you can't be pushed. Amen. Amen. You can't be pushed. And when I say pushed, I mean forced to do it to please someone else. Now, if it's in the child's heart to be the fastest runner in the history of mankind, that's in their heart. But you don't speak that on them. Oh, Oh, I see wings on your feet. Oh, the spirit of Mercury. We call on Mercury right now. Man, that's a ritual. Mercury, that's a false God. How you bring Mercury into the church? Come up here. We're going to anoint the shoes. Take shoes off right there. We're going to touch them and let wings just appear on the feet. (laughs) 
God said that you shall be the fastest runner that he's ever built. <laughs> what? Man, God didn't tell you that. <laughs> Amen. This is not godly love, but worldly love, which causes envy and jealousy in their hearts and distorts their love for others. So when you push them to be that, you said that that's the mark. So people that aren't that, something is wrong with them. And it distorts the way they love. Yeah, you done push your daughter to be the smartest of the lawyer. She's just going to be, she's going to go to school for 18 years. She quit halfway and meet a dude that got one year of junior college. But he tell her, I promise you, I'm going to take care of you. You done rejected him. Ah, nah. Ah, nah. Nah, nah. You going to marry a dude that got, got the degree? You going to marry the... What? I'm, can I stay right there? Yeah. Somebody, ooh, ooh, somebody manifesting, gonna fly. We gonna see somebody fly out of here today. Yeah. <laughs> they got to get up out of here. They can't stand that kind of talk. That's crazy talk. No, I know plenty of them in here that married their wives. Wives super educated. And the man married him. And the father-in-law or mother-in-law took a position against them. Yes, sir. So we judging folks by worldly standards. Yes, sir. Amen. 80% of the Fortune 500 companies are owned by men that did not finish college. And all the folks go to college to work for them. Don't you get me started. Amen. I didn't finish. I was living in my car. And one day I just said, you know what? I can't do this no more. I'm trying to go to class and living in a car. You can't do that. Now, God ain't going to speak to you like he spoke to me. He gave me a vision and all that. That might not happen for you. I guarantee you, when I started traveling, didn't nobody ask me for my credentials. They said, come preach the gospel. Because the gospel you preaching is saving souls, changing lives. There are lives that have been changed and are still changed. And this message is still potent. And it is still delivering and setting people free. I don't need a piece of paper to tell me that. To approve of me. Now you might need it. You want to be a veterinarian? You better get a piece of paper. You should be working on dogs in the back of a pickup. <laughs> Ain't nobody bringing you their pet. They gonna trust you with that pet. That's a beloved pet. No, I got you. Just come on over here. Is that a sewing machine? Well, this is for the incision I make. You know, I, well, you can't operate on Rufus. Is that YouTube you have pulled up? Yeah, see, everything's on YouTube. I, how to do an appendectomy on a frog is on YouTube. Nah, I think I'll take them to the one that finished. <laughs> Amen. So some situations, it's all different. And ain't nobody knocking you if you need to educate. Whatever it is, but we don't put people down that have different paths in their lives. Different ways that they got to where they are. This is not godly love, but worldly love, which creates envy and jealousy in their hearts and distorts their love for others. James 3 and 16. For where envy and strife is, there is what? Confusion. But not just confusion, but what else? Every So where folks are comparing themselves to folk, talking about what people have, wishing they have what somebody else has, there's confusion. 
and every evil work in their heart. You know why? Because they'll do every evil thing to get what they want to get. Woo! Yeah, those are voodoo dolls. Just in case you didn't know, these are the 2022 versions. They look a little different. The devil uses witchcraft to make people feel inferior. Man, the Lord spoke this to me, y'all. This is a revelation for me. Witchcraft makes people feel inferior. If the devil can make you feel inferior, you'll sin. Yeah, you'll sin. Yeah, you'll sin because you feel less than someone. So you're going to gossip, slander, pull them down some kind of way to feel better about yourself. And all that I just named is sin. See, some folks going to hell because they can't shut up. They talking about folks too much. Well, they talking about people because witchcraft has made them feel inferior. And it's powerful witchcraft. You know why? Look where it came from. What did the devil feel in heaven? Inferior. So what did he do? Went against the authority. Rebelled against the authority because he was inferior. How did Eve sin? He spoke to her and made her feel inferior. I preach. That's witchcraft. Yeah, yeah. Folks sitting in here asking you, oh, that's your car out there? Oh, okay, you better watch them. That okay is loaded. That means I'm going to go talk about you. Because I feel you made me feel inferior. Then a person that's not used to any authority, and the pastor come to him and say, hey, bro, you know, no, nah, man, I, I, you know, I, I'm going to have to take you off your position, man, because I don't like this decision you made. Oh, what? They feel inferior. Yeah. Yeah. You just rejected them. Now they feel inferior. They got to get on the Internet and talk. Yeah. This form of depression, and that's all it is, it's a form of depression. You depress. Most people are depressed because they don't have something that they set out to get. preaching in here. I know I am. That's why it's so quiet. Oh, we're going to take chairs out of here. This form of depression. It's depression. You're depressed. Causes people to feel someone is blocking them or stopping them from having what they desire. In turn, they blame others betray others and maliciously attack others because of their inferiority complex that the witchcraft has caused them to feel. Yeah. So when the devil wanted to turn our world upside down, he needed a ceremony. Yeah. So he needed BLM yeah. and Antifa right. to get out in them streets and do witchcraft. Do a whole witchcraft ceremony that was televised yeah. Yeah. and bring the spirit of inferiority into play not just blacks whites too inferiority oh you grew up with both your parents oh you think you better you think you special oh you christian you think you're better you white you think you better they did this spell over the whole world now the world is woke gotta recognize everything I identify as a toad. <laughs> when you talk to me, speak toad. <laughs> and you got to do it or he can sue you. <laughs> Inferior. Inferior. That's the devil's spirit. All over the world, especially in the church. That's when folks started leading rebellions against leaders in the church. Because they felt inferior. He think he's better. So in turn, they blame others, betray others. All of these things, Galatians 6 and 3. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Bruh, we all inferior. We all inferior because we compare to the most high God. He is the supreme being. We're all inferior. 
you think you're better than somebody else, you're deceiving yourself. The devil also uses witchcraft to break up families and ultimately hurt church fellowship. Folks ain't spoke to their mother, ain't spoke to their father. Upset, but then try to get on their ashy, crushed their knees and pray to God. Do you really believe you have a relationship with God and you hate your father or mother? That's impossible. It's impossible. He ain't listening to you. You attacking somebody, trying to destroy somebody. You really believe you have a relationship with the Lord? No. You're a witch. Or witchcraft is operating through you. That's why you can't shut up. Every time I try to not talk, it just comes out anyway. That's because it's witchcraft. He destroys families by making them feel inferior. That's all he got to do. Make a family. F- <laughs> what did Cain feel? You know why Cain felt inferiority? He was the older brother, but his brother had something that he had to submit to his brother to get. To sacrifice to the Lord, he couldn't give God vegetables. He had to give God a lamb. And the only way to get it was to submit to his brother's authority and get the lamb. I preach in here. Get the lamb. Sacrifice the lamb. That's what Cain didn't want to do. I ain't submitting to hell. Why would I? God can speak to me too. No, Cain. Abel has what you need. So you're going to kill the man. That has instead of submitting to his authority and getting what you need, you're going to kill him. (laughs) Yeah. So make a family member, church member, somebody feel inferior. You know, sometimes we got to set people down. Sometimes we got to handle people a certain way or whatever. Once they get that, if they get that inferiority feeling... We know we're going to have some problems. Yeah. But that's what happened to Cain. And that's what the devil does. He destroys families by making them feel inferior. Or that others are looking down on them and judging their past errors. So family members start feeling like because they, you know, messed up or whatever, the rest of the family is talking about them, looking down on them and judging them. So they retaliate. By attacking the faults of others to make themselves look better. This causes strife and hatred between families, which in turn ruins fellowship among them. And the devil is happy. Proverbs 26 and 22, the words of a talebearer. What's a talebearer? Somebody talking somebody's personal business. Tattletale. Talebearer. Are as what? Wounds. And they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Whose belly? The tailbearer's belly. That's where all these gut issues come from. When children are raised with this type of crazy drama in these witchy houses, they usually grow up and run from truth and the word of God because they saw and heard so-called Christians in their family beefing and talking about one another, putting down others and speaking railing accusations against one another is witchcraft operating to block the love of God towards each other. Second Corinthians 6 and 3. We put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. Summary! Oh, don't clap yet. I got two, two pages of summaries. 
It's a lot. The devil hates family. He hates fellowship. And his greatest enemy is the church. So he has set up all kinds of ways to attempt to stop it. He has caused our society to embrace LGBTQ plus A dollar sign <laughs> marriages and unions to destroy children with confusion and depression. He has caused our culture to embrace out of wedlock births and single parenting as the norm, which usually deletes the male role in the child rearing and causes children to be unbalanced. He has caused bad parenting to lead to disrespect and hatred for authority, which in turn causes children to grow up with no respect for godly authority in the church. That's the beauty of this church. You're going to respect the authority of this house. Amen. Amen. You're going to respect it. I don't have to enforce it. The men who's watching for their very own families are going to enforce it in here. Yeah, they brought their family here. So they don't want no riffraff messing up their plan that God has given them for their home. So if you riffraff, get your ragdoll tail out of here. You know if you riffraff. You knew it as soon as I said riff. Bad family members are always bad church members. Yeah, yeah, I guarantee you, when they're acting a fool against the church, look at their home. The issues in their home will always show up in the church and usually discourage the simple-minded members. Who are the simple-minded? The ones that's, you know, on the fence. They're not really in the word like they should be. So foolishness going to always get to them. Family and church are being attacked by this type of witchcraft at an alarming rate. So many are falling away and claiming that God is done with the church and the church age is over. That's a lie. Amen. Amen. The church age ain't over. Why do they say that? You know why the church age ain't over? Because Jesus called the church his bride. How you going to love Christ and have a problem with his wife? got a problem with my woman you don't love me so if Christ called the church his bride you got a problem with the church you got a problem with him no you know what the problem really is let me keep on reading can I keep on reading let me this is because this, this is because the four walls, that's what they always call it. Oh, we got to get out the four walls. This is why they want to get out of the four walls. I'm good with the four walls. We got about six, seven walls. I, I'm good with all the walls. I love it. You want Jesus going and come in here. You'll find him. We got him in here. I might see you on the street, but then I might not. But I definitely see you in here. So, yay, man. I love the walls. But they always, you see, you got to get the, the four walls. The, this is because the four walls of the church are merely a mirror of the four walls of the home. So if their home is in disarray with no real authority and hap has a child rearing, then they will usually demonize the four walls of the church. Those that fight against God's plan for the church are usually casualties of a broken home or a traumatic upbringing. Can I keep preaching in here? Witchcraft is rebellion. And the devil is causing men and women to rebel against his plan for the home and the church. Witches are convincing people that they don't need fellowship. They don't need family. And they only need a goal to manifest. That's what witches are doing. But this, look at somebody say, this is not true at all. This is not true at all. These are lies from a devil that was kicked out of the greatest family ever created. I, you can only imagine what he feels like. These are the thoughts of an enemy that can't stand to see the beautiful adoption of a godly heritage in families. These are the desires of the wicked one that will do any and everything he can to stop people from showing physical love toward one another. Digital love, that's not the same. Amen. Amen. You ain't feeling no love in the metaverse. And ultimately, these 
these are the plans of a wicked antichrist that will cause people to no longer feel the physical electric love energy that the Holy Spirit emits. Somebody, wait a minute. That sounds like new age. No, it's before a new age. It's old age. The Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost fell, it did something electric. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you feel something electric. It's not just about you believing, but it's about it coming and empowering you. And you do know that you've been changed. The devil wants to end the family, end the church, and end love forever. But God is more powerful than the devil. And as long as true believers are here on earth, the love of God will always, look at somebody say always, always shine through us. We will love and not hate. We will uplift and not what? Tear down. We will bless and not curse. We will forgive and not what? Retaliate. We will take wrong and not argue. We will not allow the devil to cause us to miss out on love just because he did. Everyone stand to your feet. We're going to read this scripture while you're standing. Because this is important for us as a fellowship. This church is trying to grow. So we got to lay the law down. First Peter 3 and 8. Finally, be ye all of what? One mind. Don't be in here if you ain't of one mind. Go be with the mind you went. Having compassion one of another as brethren, being pitiful, and then be courteous, not rendering what? Somebody do you wrong, you don't do them wrong. You don't render evil for evil. Or railing for rent. If they talking about you, let them talk. They talked about Jesus. They trumped up charges and lied. They accused him of all kind of false stuff. And he didn't say nothing about it. Because he wasn't going to exchange race. If Jesus had said something back, they would have blew up. <laughs> Who talking about me? Pow! Head just gone. <laughs> so we don't do that. We don't pay nobody back. Render railing for railing. And they love that because that attention means you thinking about them. But you give country-wise blessings, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, if you want to love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from what? If you want to love life and see good days, shut up. Quit talking about people. Quit looking for folks that's talking about people. Quit looking at all the gossip pages on Instagram and worried about what Kim Kardashian is. Ooh, uh, see that first husband, and then that second, and then that day, and then that, 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 that. You sound crazy. You don't know them. You don't know them. So if you want to live, if you want to love life and see good days, I love that love life. Because people that gossip and stuff don't love life. They hate their life. They hate their business. That's why they're in somebody else's business. He said, but if you want to love life and see good days, shut up. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no what? God. And let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and eschew it, capture it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. He's watching. And his ears are open unto their prayers. He's listening. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? So why do I got to return railings for railings? Why am I even worried about anybody if the Bible is telling me they can't harm me if I'm a follower of that which is good? Amen. But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Amen. 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 That's who we're going to be. We're going to act right, talk right, 
Amen. We're going to be true Adam and believers, not because we sing a song. But we're not going to render evil for evil, railing for railing. We're going to pray for folks. Amen. We're going to pray for them and love them. That was some of us back in the day. So we're going to have compassion. Amen. Amen. So I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you because witchcraft is in families. And I want to believe God that it will be out of your family. Because you are making the stand. That the devil cannot have any part of your family. The devil can't use witchcraft to change the trajectory of your home. The devil can't mess with your children. The devil can't have them. He can't have your husband, your wife. We're going to pray right now against this witchcraft of inferiority. All of it. So if that's you, just come on up. I'm going to believe God with you. We're going to believe God. Off my family, hands off, mittens off, nails off, crusty hands off. Take your hands off. My family belongs to God. You can't have them, devil. You can't have them. You can't have them. I'm not whispering against my family. I'm not speaking against them. I'm not gossiping against them. I'm not tearing people down with my words. I'm not tearing people down because I think I might have known something when they heard something. I'm not doing that. These last days, I'm going to be blessed of the Lord. And the things I say are going to be blessings and not curses. In the name of Jesus. And I'm going to speak life over my children. Over my daughters. My daughters are going to be wives. In Jesus name. My son are going to be great husbands. In Jesus name. They're going to defy the odds. They're going to defy the odds. I can't tell you what kind of job they're going to have. I can't tell you what kind of money they're going to have. But I can tell you that they're going to be good husbands. They're going to be good wives. They're going to be strong in this hour. In the name of Jesus. Anyone else? We're going to believe God. We're going to believe God. Just bow your heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. Believing that the gospel was preached in here. The gospel of truth, the gospel that changes us, the gospel that purges, the gospel, Father God, that enlightens, the gospel that gives us a pathway to follow. Father God, we believe it was spoken in here. And no matter what has been said to us before, no matter what's been whispered to us, no matter what's been uh, contrived against us, Father God, we believe that the truth was preached in here today. And God, we accept it right now. And right now we denounce all witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands. Any witchcraft that's coming through our families, any witchcraft that's been coming, even through us, any witchcraft, Father God, any, any thing that the enemy's been doing in our families, causing us to feel inferior, causing family members to feel inferior, causing us to have complexes, causing us to act on them, causing us, Father God, to mistreat people, causing us to say things we shouldn't say, do things we shouldn't do. Father God, even causing them to attack us. Father God, causing them to come against us, causing them to hate on us for no reason. Whatever this witchcraft is, Father God, we won't be depressed by it, but we will overcome it right now. In the name of Jesus, God, we take a step above it right now in the spirit realm. And we exercise our authority as believers in you. We exercise our authority of the Holy Ghost right now. And we overstep the wicked one. We overstep his witchcraft, his plan. We overstep his gossip, his slander. We overstep it right now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we will be strong vessels of honor dedicated to you. Our children, we dedicate them to you right now. Our sons, our daughters, Father God, our lives. And we will not be overcome by the wicked one. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I speak against that witchcraft that's working to keep you single. Single women sabotaging relationships I speak it right now single men that can't find who they're looking for I speak against witchcraft that's come that was sent to you to keep you single in the name of Jesus I speak it off of you I speak against the witchcraft that's come to make you barren so you will not have fruit and will not give to your godly heritage I speak against it right now in the name of Jesus I speak against the witchcraft over every man whose wife 
is controlling, manipulative, and taking him through those channels that are of the enemy, not allowing him to stand, stand tall and be the man of his house. I speak against the Ahab spirit right now in the name of Jesus. I speak against the spirit that will not even let him prosper, will not let him get a good job, will not let him pay his bills. I speak against it with the authority that God has given me in the name of Jesus. And I speak against all mental warfare right now, all mental warfare, spirit of suicide, spirit of taking yourself out, spirit of counseling yourself out, spirit of not wanting to be here anymore. I speak against all mental witchcraft in the name of Jesus with authority. You will know who you are in God. You will know that he purposed you for this hour. You will know that you'll stand for him in this hour. We speak against it in the name of Jesus. That we will be of one mind in here. One body in here. In the name that is above every name. We believe it and we pray it in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Say, declared right now, I'm going to make it. And you can't get me out. But now, don't say that. But, but say, I'm going to make it. Witchcraft in the name of Jesus be broken off of all of God's children. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You celebrate somebody's story, your story will be celebrated. You celebrate with somebody else's victory, you'll get victory. We celebrate each other in here. We love one another in here. If you did well, I'm going to praise God for it. Hallelujah. 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 Boy, I want to sing, God is a good God. Yes, he is. I want to sing a whole song. It's the wrong key. Thank God it is. All right, everybody, go to your seat. Hallelujah. Don't try to change keys. Get up, PJ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, Elder. 